What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Astro DFS bringing you a brand new video. Today's video, I'm going over week three's Thursday night showdown. Uh, so the way I used to do it is just have both sides kind of switch back and forth. Uh, but have it now in a spreadsheet for uh, subscribers to check it out at all times. Um, and we'll have, you know, my favorite plays come right up to the game. That way uh, subscribers get that, and that's one of the advantages of being a subscriber. Um, so let's get into it. Christian McCaffrey, most expensive player on both sides by far, right? Uh, DraftKings sees a 13000 priced player. It's been a long time since I can remember seeing one. And even at that, a running back. That is a crazy price. Uh, on FanDuel, 18000 I don't think that's too absurd. I think we see 18000 quite a bit. But 13000 that is a high one. But rightfully so, right? So uh, it's a great matchup for Christian McCaffrey. Giants have given up a lot of fantasy points to running backs. Um, San Fran's run game, you know, very good. That's the identity of the 49ers. Um, huge favorites in this matchup. Uh, 10 was the last one that I saw. Uh, so yeah, Giants giving up 24.1 fantasy points a game of running back. It's not huge, but you have to remember of how good, you know, San Fran's defense can be, uh, and what the Giants have played. So, uh, they, they got beat in the air against Arizona and beat on the ground and, you know, uh, Dallas's defense did a lot to him. So, um, the games, the games haven't been pretty for, for Giants fans, right? Uh, but Christian McCaffrey, I think, is worth his price on both sides, right? Going to be the most guaranteed safe usage play. The only way he isn't safe is if he, um, you know, knock on wood, sustains an injury, which we don't hope for ever. We hope to get past a primetime game without a big injury. So uh, Christian McCaffrey, yeah, definitely playing ball on both sides. Love it. Everyone does, right? He's going to be the most owned player by far. Even at his expensive salary, we're going to find ways to get him in there. Saquon already announced out, so that's good, right? That's good for us. Uh, unfortunate for him, you know, player player health is, is definitely something to not overlook, right? We all care about fantasy, but um, we want players to be healthy at least. Just better for the game. Uh, but... It's good to the fact that we know he's out already. We don't have to wait until game time. We know he's going to be out, so that is a positive. Uh, Daniel Jones is a fade on both, right? So it's never going to be a full fade when I when I have these of getting zero ownership, right? But it's having lower ownership. Uh, and when you're doing showdowns, you want to enter more than one line. You want to enter however much allows you to enter, right? There's contests on both sides. FanDuel has a nickel contest. We're seven dollars and fifty cents. You get one hundred and fifty lines. DraftKings, I believe, has a fifty cent one. They might have a quarter one, but I know for sure they have a fifty cent one. So uh, it's seventy five dollars, right? A little more expensive. Um, but if you're trying, if you want to try out an optimizer and do one hundred and fifty lines, and uh, FanDuel's the site to try all that. So Daniel Jones, I I don't like. I don't like in this matchup, right? I still feel like he can get some rushing upside. Um, there's the chance they have a good passing game, right? The Rams kind of tore apart San Fran's secondary. Um, but no Barkley. Two offensive linemen, one confirmed out, possibly another one out against the San Fran defense, who's top five in pressures. And the Giants' offensive line is already top five in pressures allowed. We saw what Dallas's defense was able to do against them. Uh, now, I believe Dallas has some better secondary pieces as well. But... You know, that defensive line is scary for San Fran. So, Daniel Jones is a fade for me. Brock Purdy is a like. The thing that worries me about Brock Purdy before we get into it is, yes, like, I, I have San Fran winning this game with ease. Will it happen? Maybe not. You know, my my, my luck on primetime games isn't always the greatest. Um, primetime just brings out uh, difference in, in players. Some people love it. So, um, but... If it does end up like that and the Giants are able to compete and they somehow score on San Fran's defense a decent amount, Brock Purdy's a really good play here. Uh, the only thing semi-concerning is Brandon Ayuk. You know, his injury status is we're waiting 
supposed to be a game time decision so we're gonna have to wait very very long to get that answer if he's gonna play or not um but it's good matchup overall new york secondary is very inexperienced uh they don't have a lot of experience there and the experience that is there is not very talented um so yeah brock purdy is a like here he him in that san fran offense it's a really good system so brock purdy is definitely a yes that i want exposure to even with his salary of 14.5 on FanDuel. obviously on DraftKings, uh it's a little more manageable you know about 20 22,000 on DraftKings, so almost half your salary um on FanDuel 32 so more than half so that's stuff you have to factor in uh but Debo if Brandon Ayuk is out he's my second favorite San Fran player uh and I'd put him over Brock Purdy in that aspect uh even if Brandon Ayuk is in I still really like Debo Samuel in in this slate uh Brandon Ayuk if he is healthy yes I like Brandon Ayuk um you do have to watch for the injury status and hear you know what it is but I like Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel if both are in. Um, obviously, the ownership is probably going to be adjusted because Ayuk is in. But if Ayuk is out, that's good for the fantasy aspect of it. You know, bad you want players in. But um, Debo, yes, I, I'm I have more ownership of him right now than I do Brandon Ayuk if he's in. So um, would prefer Debo. But on FanDuel, that price difference, though, I'd probably lean some more ownership on Ayuk on FanDuel than one on DraftKings. You're not really saving that much, but FanDuel, you're saving 1500 That's huge. Darren Waller is a fade for me. It's just a bad matchup going against mostly Fred Warner. Um, the Giants and, you know, their their offense just hasn't looked good. The, the targets Darren Waller gets is good, right? It's almost the um, same scenario as Evan Ingram when he was there. Just getting a lot of targets and being good in that aspect. But Waller's not getting enough targets to be that much. But possibly with Saquon being out, maybe we see a few more targets headed towards Darren Waller. I just think his price is too high for the liking, right? So it's not saying that I totally hate Darren Waller. There's a possibility of him having a good game. But for the price that you're paying for him, like George Kittle's cheaper. I'd rather play George Kittle on both sides than I would Darren Waller, right? DraftKings, it's only 800 so not that much of a difference. But on FanDuel, 2500 I'd rather play George Kittle, who has a better matchup, right? Primetime Kittle. The Kittle has some really good historic primetime games, so George Kittle is, yeah, I, I play it. And Matt Breida, I, I, for his price, it's the same thing, right? Too expensive for me with a really bad matchup. And that's that's key thing is a bad matchup, bad matchup and price. You can have a good matchup, but the price is too tall, and you can have a bad matchup, but you get a lot of value. So both these guys are fades for me. You're gonna see a lot of fading on the the Giants side and a lot of liking on the 49ers side. Um, but yeah, if you look in the notes here, I have I would rather play Brightwell or Gray. On, on both sides to be honest so um but going down george kittle yes it's very good matchup for him if i out that's a bonus to george kittle you know getting more exposure if i is in probably gonna lower it a little bit to adjust for i being in and the targets and stuff i has been having a great season so far two game sample size but isaiah hodgins is a like on DraftKings, not alike on FanDuel, and, it, and like I said, it's pricing. Th this is why we have both sites. So on DraftKings, he's 6,400, so around the George Kittle, around the San Fran, around even Darius Slayton too, but cheaper than Darren Waller, Matt Burita. On FanDuel though, he's more expensive than Kittle, more expensive than San Fran's defense, and right behind Matt Burita. So Isaiah Hodgins on FanDuel, I don't like. I'm going to get more exposure on DraftKings than I would FanDuel because of that pricing difference. Uh, 49ers defense, though, like O-line's out, right? Two, one confirmed, one questionable. Barkley's out. That offense usually isn't the same with Barkley out. Um, if you go back and look at the numbers, they're not entirely bad, though. Uh, but it's also been some of the matchups they've had as well. And, yeah, it's... 
San Fran is top five in pressures to quarterback. Giants are top or bottom five in pressures allowed or top five, however you want to say it, and pressures allowed to their quarterback. So it's a really good matchup for San Fran. Um, could be a really huge statement game going against the Giants, right? Playoff team last year. Um, last week against the Rams wasn't the greatest showing defensively. So it's a good bounce back opportunity for that defense. Darius Slayton uh, on, on both sides is kind of my favorite Giants receiver to get to right now. Uh, just a lot of routes run and the targets per route, right? It's none of the receivers have a good target share per route run, but with the amount that he runs and the matchup for the secondary as of right now, Darius Slayton is is the guy that I go to on the Giants right now. Um, as far as pricing, there's some values obviously, but as far as a liking, Darius Slayton's that guy. Jalen Hyatt. On DraftKings, I think he's just too high to become a play I like. Versus FanDuel, it's getting towards that bottom bottom tier, a guy that you pay down for uh, and can feel really good about. And it's the same thing for Brightwell, right? I like Gary Brightwell, but the issue is he's too expensive on DraftKings. FanDuel, you get that discount. I, I think Matt Breida doesn't fit what the Giants want to do with their running back as enough as much as Brightwell and uh, Gray can. So... Um, on FanDuel, they're, they're better plays than on DraftKings. But next one is Juwan Jennings. Juwan Jennings becomes a play, right? I have the injury on DraftKings because I think his price on DraftKings, if Ayuk is in, is too high. But if Ayuk is out, then I do like his pricing on DraftKings. FanDuel, his price is good. On It doesn't matter if Ayuk is in or out. Juwan Jennings is usually that third receiver. Um, good pass blocker so that's why they have him in there uh gets opportunities here and there right i'd say he's one of their deep threats but they don't use him enough in that role they don't have to right um but if he if iuk is out he becomes a, a value piece to me on DraftKings as well as fanduel he's seven thousand on fanduel so it's a good pay down for a san fran player right you look at 49ers defense ten thousand kittle nine thousand iuk 12 Debo, 13. So, uh, Juwan Jennings becomes a value to me at 7,000. Even that much more if Ayuk is out. Paris Campbell's a fade, right? I don't... According to the, the matchup, like, he probably has the better matchup. Um, and he could be a guy that I just don't want to pay the price, right? 8,000, so you're paying more than Hyatt. Less than Slayton, um, but more than Jennings, right? So, uh, his, his price is just... It's just not there for me. Like, if it was lower, if it was under 3K on DraftKings and around 7,000, that's a different story. But I just, I don't love everything to it to get a lot of exposure to. And then Jake Moody, uh, 42 on DraftKings, 95 on FanDuel, right? It's not a value on FanDuel. It's a like, um, just because it's, you're, you're paying quite a bit. You're paying 500 less than San Fran, and you're paying 500 more than George Kittle for Jake Moody. Now, he has gotten some good opportunities with San Fran. Uh, hasn't looked terrible. Um, and for both teams, it's kind of mid-tier in red zone. So the Giants are kind of, I think, around 60% uh, of drives in the red zone end in the score uh, or a touchdown. So about 40% can end in a field goal, somewhere around there, I think 35 to 40%. Uh, and it's kind of the same thing for San Fran's offense. So that's why I like Jake Moody in almost the exact same scenario as Graham Gano, um, except it doesn't seem like the Giants want to use Graham Gano this year. I remember last year, especially in a primetime game where he had over 20 fantasy points, and I think was the highest, if not the second highest scoring player on that slate. Um, but I do like him in this matchup. I can see a scenario where he gets 10 plus fantasy points and does a majority of the Giants scoring. Another scenario is the Giants can't get down the field um, for him to kick field goals. So yeah, Giants defense though is a full fade, right? I'm I'm going to get minimal to almost zero exposure. You still want to have some exposure, but not a lot. Um, I just, San Fran's offense looks really good, has not been really stopped and they played a really good defense week one so uh giants fade elijah mitchell has uh he's a like for me i would have value right he he counts as value as well uh the reason i like him is the opportunity if one 
Christian McCaffrey goes down for whatever reason. Elijah Mitchell gets in. If San Fran scores a lot, they're they're not going to play McCaffrey then. They're they're going to rest McCaffrey. McCaffrey's still going to get his volume. He's still going to get his snaps. Don't get me wrong, but if they're in a sizable lead, they're going to use Elijah Mitchell and Jordan Mason. They're they're going to save McCaffrey, right? And and hope that he could play almost every game this season for him. So that's when Elijah Mitchell becomes a value slash like play for me. So um, definitely someone that I'm looking at. Eric Gray, same thing. The pricing is why you like him. He's a value, right? He's under 3K on DraftKings. He's the minimum on FanDuel. They have him at the minimum at 5,000. Uh, and I would rather get ex more exposure to Gray at his price than I would paying up for Matt Burita at his. So um, something to look at there. Sterling Shepard, don't like him on either site, right? Um, you don't know who the Giants are going to play at wide receiver in the aspect of Wondell Robinson here. We'll talk about him shortly. Could see the field. Um, the way they have their, their wide receivers is kind of ridiculous. Uh, Daniel Bellinger is, is a value on DraftKings, but it's not one I like, right? I don't think he has a high volume high upside opportunity tonight but for his pricing getting in there sneaking out a touchdown right is a possibility if the Giants get down there using the two tight end doing a play action going to Daniel Bellinger so um it, it's not it's not a love it's not I'm gonna get a decent amount of exposure to but I am gonna get a little bit of exposure to him on DraftKings because of his price. FanDuel, there's just some other plays that I'd rather get to to not get that exposure there. Uh, next is Kyle Juszczyk. I think he's a value on both sides, right? One touchdown and he hits value, especially on DraftKings paying 400. Um, we all know that San Fran plays their running back. They use a running back, and Kyle Juszczyk has been arguably the best fullback in the last five, ten years. Um, but his price at 400, I, I think he's too much of a crazy value if he scores a touchdown. Uh, and his pricing on FanDuel, 5,500, right? Almost a bare minimum there as well. Another value, Jordan Mason. I mentioned the same thing for Elijah Mitchell. It's just if McCaffrey goes down, Jordan Mason then becomes RB2. Um, if San Fran scores a lot, Jordan Mason, Elijah Mitchell are going to get some volume. Mitchell obviously is going to get more than Mason, but there is that scenario. Jordan Mason gets some volume. It's the same thing for Kyle Juszczyk. He might get a couple more snaps if that happens. And then uh, injury that we're looking at is Wendell Robinson. He's questionable going into the game. If he is active, $200 is a value piece for me. Definitely going to get exposure to him. Andre, uh, uh, FanDuel, they kind of have him in a way playing right that's what they're accounting for with the six thousand price otherwise he'd be five thousand uh draft kings is just going in if even if he plays he's not going to see a lot of snaps bad matchups stuff like that so if he does play he becomes a value piece for me so um that is pretty much it guys on this slate if you guys have any questions feel free to um comment down below i'll respond pretty much right away if you guys are interested in joining to get these spreadsheets uh click the link to our discord um and any questions on there feel free to ask me as well on there about what you get with your subscription and how long and all that stuff so it's a very cheap package so if you guys are interested click the link i will see you guys in the next one